Hello guys, in this video I'll be teaching you how you can fold a copyright sign designed by Maurice Suike. So this is how the model looks like. As you can see there is a, a circle there and there is a letter C. Uh, that C stands for copyright. And when you take a look at this model you might not think that it's like very impressive. Uh, you might think it's just, you know, just a random model that looks maybe cool. Um, but let me try to explain why is this model awesome. Well, the first fact is it's designed by Morisue. The second fact is that it's very hard to design a model that has this kind of color changes. It's very hard to make a color change in the middle of the paper. So, let's say you have a square like this and then you want to have a white square or let's say a white octagon here in the middle. You could achieve that by doing a blend space and doing this. But now you need to have another color change, as you can see. And that's very challenging and uh, it's just very hard to uh, design something like this and since Morisse is a master of a uh, technique called inside out or color changing um, he was able to uh, do that uh, so yeah uh, why would you want to fold this model well for the sake of awesomeness so let's just start with folding the paper I'm using here is uh, craft paper uh, it's gold on one side and it's silver on the other side. I bought it at a local uh, art store and I'm not really sure if any company there on the internet sells it. They probably, some, somebody sells it for sure but I don't know any website so please don't ask me in the comment section uh, where did I buy the paper since I answered that question now. Okay so the paper size is um, actually I'm not sure I think it's uh, 35 by 35 um, maybe a bit smaller so I guess this ruler is 30 centimeters and yeah it's 35 by 35 or in inches that's uh, 12 inches is here so somewhere around 14 inches so uh, as you can see since it's color changing model um, you might have guessed that you can um, fold two different versions you could have this outer octagon or let's say outer circle uh, could be white or it could be a gold so if you want it to be uh, gold start with the white side up or you know just the opposite color and if you want it to be white just start with the colored side up so to be honest let me just think about it uh, I don't know I think I want to have um, a gold C in the middle so it's going to look like this well no I want to have silver C anyways I'll start with this color and it's going to be my um, well let's say white side up uh, okay so that means that uh, the outer circle is going to be silver and that's cool and then the C is going to be uh, is going to be silver as well and this uh, circle in the middle is going to be gold Okay, so I will do it this way. So, let's just start folding. Uh, the first thing we have to do is fold the diagonals. As you can see, I, I already did that. So, diagonal this way, and diagonal this way. Okay, once you do that, um, divide paper in half. So, you basically just fold, divide it horizontally and vertically in half. You align the two sides of the paper, opposite sides and make a sharp crease okay and do it in the other direction as well okay so the next step you have to fold a blends base now if you've seen my video um, where I showed you how to fold my rising sun you will know what the blends base is and if you're experienced origami folder you should know what's a blend space all it is is just folding all the corners uh, to the center of the paper to the middle of the paper so let's do that this is one of the tests you can perform to test if your uh, square is really square okay so if you ever folded a cootie catcher or something like that, you will know how to do this. Okay, so let's unfold the paper. 
Okay. Well, I'm satisfied with this paper. You can see it creases nicely, I think. Okay, so now we have to make an angle bisector. Um, to be precise, we are going to make a 22.5 degree line going from this point. Now that sounds something super crazy, but it's it's just folding this edge to this line. It's like you're making uh, it's like you're making a fish base. So when you fold this, don't fold all the way. Uh, you should just mark this part over here. Um, but you know, if you want, you can fold, you can crease. Um, but it will just create extra creases that you won't need in the future. But this is the crease that is important. Okay, so now we're going to make horizontal and vertical line going from this crease. Um, so let me just mark it. Uh, so that you can maybe see it a bit better, although I think it won't make any difference. Uh, so the, this from this point over here, make sure. Oh, well, oops! Oh, here I made a mistake. From this point. So you have to be very careful not to use this uh, this reference, but this one. Okay. So you're going to fold your paper over, find where that point lies. So it's right over here. Uh, just pinch it. And now align the sides of the paper uh, to make a perfect crease. The line has to be perpendicular uh, to the side, the edges of the paper, and that, this is how you achieve that. Okay, so once you do that, we're going to use the same reference to make the line going in this direction. So, same thing as before, fold over, make a pinch there and then align the sides of the paper. You should also align uh, this this crease, this horizontal crease, well it's vertical actually, with this vertical crease for higher precision. Okay, so as you can see we have this reference is also here, so let me just mark that and that reference is also here. So now we can use uh, these two points to get all the other lines. So we'll be using this reference, basically the intersection of this vertical crease and the diagonal to uh, to create all the creases. I mean the crease, the crease we did before in every single direction. So, okay, here's the third crease and now the last one, the fourth one. Okay, and as you can see, here's another intersection. And this way you can make sure that you did everything correctly. If you fold over like that, uh, your two reference, uh, I mean, these two points should perfectly meet. I mean, the line should go through two, of two points perfectly. And that happened in my case, so that means I did everything correctly. So make sure you're not folding the edge to the middle of the paper, because that's wrong. We are not dividing in, uh, in fourths. Uh, so the next step is this. Fold along the diagonal crease. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. As you can see, now I'll fold the angle bisector of this 45 degree angle. Uh, it's just folding this edge to this line, like this. Make sure you don't fold that here or I don't know here or something. Make sure you use this line as your reference. Okay? So once you do that, you go on the other end of the triangle, other corner, and then do the same thing. Once you do that, unfold the model, fold along the other diagonal and repeat. Okay. And unfold. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Um, looks kind of nice. Uh, so now we're going to um, 
do something a bit a bit more progressing and then we can start collapsing. So go on your colored side up or white side up, I don't know, just go on the opposite color. So in my case that's silver and this is what we're going to do now. We're going to fold this edge, well actually bring these two corners to to this point, to these two points. Okay, so this is how you do that. First, you fold this here, just crease a little bit, then you do that, and then you come over here, and then you can make a you can make a sh you know you can crease sharply, but all we need is just the, this section. You, you just have to you know crease this much, you know just that much. You don't have to crease these two ends. But if you want, you can do it. But you'll just create you know extra creases that aren't really necessary. But all you have to do is that, okay? And now we have to repeat that on every single s side. So let's do it. So this is how I did it. Um, here's a little uh, trick. Um, you can also use this line as your reference. As you can see, when you bring this, cor uh, this corner to this point, uh, those two points should meet right here. Okay, so as I said before, just crease the section in the middle about this much. I guess up to this, up to here, but I just crease a little bit more, you know, just in case. So let's repeat that. You can also get these points later while folding, but I think you would be more confused um, with my explanation when we come to that point. So I, I think it's better to do it now, you know, before we start collapsing. Okay, so Chris, just this much, and okay, that's it, I guess. Okay, so you should have this, so something like that. Also, just to make sure, don't fold this edge to here. That's not correct. You have to fold this edge to this to 22.5 lines that we did before. Okay, so if you have everything, um, if you did everything correctly, uh, we can proceed. So, just turn around uh, the paper and be on your opposite side, uh, which is gold side for me. And now we're going to make the crease uh, that starts here. Okay, so now this, is, this part is very crucial. If you did this wrong, you can't really fold them all. So make sure you're not using let me just zoom in a bit more. Okay, so we have our 22.5 crease here, and then we have our crease from the blends base. Remember, we folded this edge uh, to the, I mean, the corner to the center, and we are looking for the intersection between 22.5 line and this this uh, blends base line. So make sure you're using this point. So let me just mark it on every single um, end of the paper. So that I don't get confused and you guys as well. Okay, so I was kinda uh, okay, like this. So basically I just marked on every single end. And uh, so let's make creases here. Um, you can do a a every crease separately or you can start collapsing right away. Um, so let's f make one crease first. So first you fold over the paper and now you're looking for those two lines. As you can see, I can see them. I need to crease from this point to this point. So what you can do is, you know, just make a little pinch and, you know, you're like air folding, folding in the air like this, make a little pinch and then fold like that and then just make a straight crease and then uh, connect the two points like that. So if you were able to do this, you can fold the whole model. Now make sure you don't fold the edge to the center of the paper because that's wrong. Okay, so once you have this, um, we can actually start collapsing right away. So let me just show you, uh, for those of you guys who want to start collapsing now, uh, this is what you have to do. You have to make a mountain fold along this 22.5 line, like this. Uh, you can put your finger 
uh, here, your nail, your thumb, and then shift the paper like this. Move it in this motion, and fold like that, and as you can see, the paper does not lie flat, so you want to flatten it like this. As you can see, the corner, you should bring the corner to the center of the paper, and if you did everything, if you brick waste everything precisely and perfectly, it should end, uh, I mean, it should go up to the middle of the paper, center of the paper. So, something like that, and uh, let's do it on the other side as well. You make a mountain fold here, and then you shift your line. I think it might, it might be a bit hard, but what is important is that this is not full 22.5 uh, lines. So if we were to extend the two lines, it will get, um, you know, like a triangle has 22.5 angles, but um, this is not a triangle if we cut this part. This is not the triangle, it's still, um, well, not sure what's the name in English. Anyways, so do this. Make a nice fold there. Well, actually, we're, yeah, we're folding here. Okay. So once you do this, um, you can make the same thing right over here. And then you have to like make that that line we did at the beginning. So here we're doing it, doing that line while collapsing. But you can also make make every line separately and then start collapsing. I mean the process is the same. But if you do it this way, it's going to be a bit tricky. Um, but anyways, this is the way you do it. You just you know make the lines while you are collapsing. Okay and then go on this side and just continue, but I will pre-crease all the lines for those of you guys who want to be a bit more precise. Okay, so I need to connect this point with this point, so let me just do that. Okay, I just did that. And I need to connect this point with this point. And okay, so we have something like this now. So now you can collapse it without any problems at all. So let's start here. So fold like that, then make the mountain fold along this crease as I said before. And then make sure you, you make a fold here and then you will just uh, flatten the whole model. And as I said, if you did everything correctly, uh, the corner uh, should be brought uh, to the center of the paper. So, basically repeat on the left side as well. So, okay, so here's the line. And uh, I will go in clockwise direction, so I'll do it here. Okay. Do it here, and do it here, then do it here, and then you come to this point where you, can, where you can't do anything, and what you have to do is basically to do two of them in the same time. So make the mountain fold here, or you can just turn around the paper and see what's going on around here, and you know, make a mountain fold here, make a mountain fold here, and then just collapse like that. It might be a bit tricky but if you take a look at the crisp pattern uh, this will all make sense. Now I'll unfold the model before we proceed so that you can see what I did. Okay so you should end up with something like that. If you came this far you can fold this model for sure. So this is how, how it looks like basically. All it is is just uh, making this sort of table like that. You know this is not a full square. You cut the corners like that and then we end up with this. It's very brilliant because this is the way he was able to get a color change in the middle and then, then get color changes on the um, here in the middle of the paper like this region. Okay so it looks like that. So if I flip my model and unfold this part you will see that 
we came this far. I mean, we have the same thing. Okay. So now we're going to make this letter C and, you know, just finish them all. Now, if you remember, I was talking, I talked about um, this line, so now I'll see that. Okay, so I talked about this line. If you remember, we did this line before. Now, I was saying that you can do this um, later while collapsing, and here is what I meant. Uh, Let's just just imagine that we don't have a line over here. Uh, if you're not interested in this, just skip this part. But anyways, when we do these folds and then we unfold, we can basically fold this line up and then uh, use this point as a reference. Now, the reason why I didn't choose this method is because I'll be creating like extra creases here. You know, because this way you have to make an extra crease and then you fold this up to this point and then you know. Uh, crease. Well, you can do it this way, um, but the thing is, you will create extra lines over here, and it's basically the same. Before we we did extra, we got extra lines over here. So um, at the end, it's all the same. Just choose the way that suits you more. Okay, so okay, so let's start. Uh, this is the first step. You have to fold this over like that, and instead of having a valley fold here, you want to you want this crease to be a mountain fold and this crease to be a valley fold. So this is how you do that. You make a mountain fold along this crease, and you see this will automatically go down, and then you just flatten it down, and that's all. All it all the, <laughs> this is every, this is all you have to do. So let me just repeat that. So I just folded this up like this. I made the mountain fold along that line and then I just kind of push this paper inside and that's it. So let's do it here. I made the mountain fold and then I just folded it down. Okay, so now you have these two flaps like this. Okay, so now I'll repeat that on every single side. Um, the flaps will, will overlap. So you're basically changing mountain folds to valley folds and valley folds to mountains. Okay, and there's one more. Okay, so this is what we got. You might also have something like this. It doesn't matter. It's just it's just a flat arrangement. Um, but yeah, what you want to find on your model is um, well, what you want to have is this when you have this free plane, so you don't have any flaps overlapping it. If you can't find it, you know, you just overlap a couple of flaps. So I'll be going in the I'll fold these two and then I will overlap like this and then fold the other two. Although I think I'll go in the uh, counterclockwise direction, but anyways. So here is what you have to do. You have to fold along this line like this. Now as you can see we'll be creating some new creases. So don't fold carelessly like that and then just smash the paper. But make sure you're making nice folds and hold these two uh, this, this paper tight like that. Okay, and then make a new crease. Okay, and uh, well, I guess I will show you. Well, okay, let's let's do this. So now you have to put your finger inside of this, and then you have to squash fold this. Not like that. Not like that. Not like that. But squash fold it like this. What you want to do is. Um, you want this edge um, to meet with. Well, I should zoom out a little bit. Okay, to meet with this line. Okay, so it meets right now, and then I will just make the crease. Another reference is this part over here. Um, this edge of the paper should be perpendicular uh, to this side. 
and here you should create a right angle triangle um, you know if we do it this way it's not right angle triangle anymore so the, here you should find a right angle a right angle a right angle and this triangle should look like this so here is uh, 45 degree here you have 62.5 and 62.5 you can measure it if you want anyway so this is what you want to get so let's repeat the same thing here so I guess the best thing you can use as your reference is the edge of the paper make sure it's perpendicular um, a little trick is this I guess just take a sheet of paper fold in half like this so that you get your right angle and then just check if this is the right angle and if it is then you're awesome and it is so you can use this uh, okay so once you do that um, uh, you should repeat this on every single side I guess this is the best way to do it you know do a couple of steps repeat on every single side and then basically do everything everywhere instead of finishing one side completely and then doing it on the um, on all the other sides from beginning because you might forget some steps so here's the thing, you, here's what you have to do you just have to uh, reveal this flat rearrange it a little bit, you fold this down okay and now you fold this, well you do this, this squash fold um, you can use this as your tool okay and then flatten same thing here now you can actually, use, when you do one, you can use this as your reference as well this point as you can see they meet right there so this is also a little test of your folding abilities as you can see I was a bit sloppy so this is, it doesn't really meet uh, this flap perfectly there but that's okay, I mean it won't really make any difference the finished result but um, you know it's just a little thing that you can keep in mind so here I just shifted this part a little bit so that it looks a bit better um, well it kinda does not anyways let's just so this is what you have now let's do it here so just rearrange the flats a little bit and then fold this down you actually don't even have to crease here you can you know just fold this down and start doing this right away so, but if you don't want to do it that way, I mean. Okay, just do it the way it sits you more. Okay, so. One more to go. So, rearrange the flaps. I'll bring the hidden flaps to the surface and then do this squash folds. I don't know, I didn't really find this model fun to fold. Uh, I'm really satisfied with the color changes here uh, because of this contrast between silver and gold. Um, it looks very nice, I guess. Okay, so you have something like that. And uh, since we did this on every single side, I guess we can, um, you know, continue. Okay, so this is what you have to do. You have to make a line that goes from this point, so this point right over here, and it goes perpendicularly to this line, and so on. You basically are, you should meet with this this part. So basically, that line will go like that. So let's try to do that. Uh, the way to do it is not just take that and fold it, but make sure you put your 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 nail there and then make the crease okay like that you can also leave a little gap ah, okay it's a bit hard to explain but if you were if you fold a lot you will already know this but when you're folding you're shifting a paper a little bit and I left there just a little gap because we'll be folding this behind later on and if there is a little gap it will align nicely and perfectly like that uh, but this is something you learn when you fold a lot so but anyways, just to live a little, little gap. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. So, okay, so you fold like that. 
and now you have to fold this edge to this line so you're basically making an angle bisector 22.5 crease um, from this point so it will go like like that so let's do it you're going to fold like that and as you can see um, you're automatically doing something uh, to this edge of the paper and so here is our next step you want to fold this like that you want to align uh, these two creases, the crease that goes straight uh, well it's like a middle crease the horizontal, uh, the vertical crease we did in the beginning so align this crease with that to make like a perfect line and also align uh, this corner um, with this edge okay and as you can see we don't really have to crease here because we already have that point and all you have to do is uh, make the line like this but if you want you can also um, fold this part like that and do it again but it gives you the same result so you're just saving some time this way because if you take a look at the model um, one part is not folded and one part is folded behind so I just did it to save some time anyways so if you were able to do that um, you're awesome uh, so now I do that on every single side so let's do one more together and then I'll just stop talking and then do everything fast uh, so as I said before you have to make the crease from this point to this point uh, so let's do it okay once you do that fold this edge to the crease we have just made like that and then align this line with the line behind it and then this corner with this edge like that it seems that this has to be a bit smaller this has to be a bit smaller or this a bit larger uh, but it's approximate oh wait this has to be a bit smaller okay you can always adjust it I mean yeah so now do the same thing here going to fold that like that and then just um, connect the points okay, this one looks very bad so I'll repeat it okay, like that looks a bit better a bit better okay so let's do it here so first fold like that so this is why I said it looks a bit bad as you can see there's a little little gap there but that's okay so once you do that fold the edge to the line like that and then do this and then do that and so on and so forth And the last one. You got very good at, the, at you know, doing the spots uh, when you finish three of them. So this is the last one. So don't worry if you're not able to get this fold down. This one uh, at the beginning. Okay. And there we go. So I'm just adjusting this part a little bit. Okay, so now we have to do some a bit few more folds and then we are done. So first 
bring these two to the to the front and now you have to fold this down and then make a squash fold like this now you want to align this crease with this line like that notice that you're making a right angle triangle here so do the same thing here okay and now you make a mount to fold along this line okay so now you repeat that on the side so first you bring this to the front you fold this down and then you do the squash fold align this line with this line and do the same thing on the left side or actually the right side in this case and uh, then fold this behind like this, this part is a bit messy but I guess it will do okay and do the same thing here so I'll just go a bit faster now And the last one. If you're using small paper, this might be a bit tricky, but if you're not able to do it the first time, just try it with a bigger paper and you'll do it without any problems. That's why I, I'm using 35 by 35 and not uh, 15 by 15 in this case. So now what you have to do is fold this behind like that so just make a mount of fold and do that everywhere basically um, as you notice that this one is not folded um, you can fold it as well if you want I just chose not to do that um, because I'm lazy but otherwise um, you, you can do it if you want on the original crease pattern we are actually doing uh, closed sinks here but uh, that will be very hard be very hard to do here, although it's possible. Holds close sink, that means that you put your finger here and then you push this paper inside like this. So here I did one. Okay, th this locks the model nicely, but uh, well, you can do it this way. You do the close sink. Wait, okay, so you do the close sink and then you put this inside. So I guess this is the way uh, Mauricio did it. Um, but sometimes if this close sink it's too small then it creates this waves in the paper so then you have to flatten that so I guess this is the way you should do it but the way I chose to do it is just you know fold it behind and um, and that's it but you can do it this way if you like so let me just do it do the rest of the mountain folds now here is what I was talking about the reason we'll make sure to always do it on the left side. The reason we were leaving a little gap there is because now when you fold that so here let me see if here I didn't leave a little gap and this is what I got as you can see it's a bit bended like that but this crease on the other hand this one's very nice because so, because I left a little gap there okay so I did it on every single side oh this one okay so now I did it on every single side and as you can see we got our circle and here is uh, we're almost done as you can see we have that uh, circle or octagon actually this is octagon and uh, this is the thing now you can create another octagon inside of it so it looks sort of like a target so th this model is just brilliant so um, Let's just, you can play around actually with this model, so let me just finish folding it and then I'll show you how you can transform it into target, although we'll make a target first. Okay, so uh, the references, there aren't any 
references actually you can do this um, randomly but here is the reference I will, I will give you so this line over here if you split it in half that's about uh, this much okay that's about this much I'm looking at the camera and I'm doing this so I might be wrong so um, so from this point you're going to fold this up and then align the diagonal crease with the diagonal crease and you'll get something like this okay and uh, use basically this reference on every single side uh, in order to get the square I recommend that you use this specific reference I mean the reference you use at the beginning you use it all the time uh, to get nice looking square because um, okay so there is square so if I used one half somewhere I don't know where is that crease now okay it's here so I use this reference here okay and then according to that reference I did all the other corners but if you were to measure on one half here so I'll just fold that like that uh, you will be a bit off and that's that's okay because it's almost impossible to get it perfect so just use the reference you used at the beginning I mean according to the first corner fold all the others okay so now uh, what you have to do is uh, so fold this down now fold to the corner um, to this crease over here and then do that everywhere this way we'll create an octagon okay and you'll get something like this and as you can see it looks like a target okay so now what you have what you can do is uh, fold this behind and you end up with the awesome looking target now this is awesome to have a circle and well if, if you assume that this is a circle so circle inside a circle inside a circle anyways so this is awesome and in order to get C as you can see um, this part is going to turn into C so all you have to do is um, fold this behind now let me show you how to do that Oops. okay so the way you do that is just if you look from inside you will have to do it like that and then you will have to fold this whole thing like this behind so let me show you how to do it um, so you can use this point as a reference or you can just go a bit up as you can see I'll leave a little gap there and then make sure you're making a, a straight crease you're not making a crease that goes like this so that's wrong it needs to be straight like that so this is sort of straight okay and so now when you fold this down well it's going to be kind of hard to show and you will just have to fold it behind and you will automatically uh, create the crease here okay so we did, it. we did that on this side and now let's do it here make sure to use same reference so I left a little gap there so I'll leave a little gap here as well okay like that Zoom out a little bit. Okay. And then just fold it behind. Okay, so now if you take a look at it, you have the C over here. And okay, oh, and the last step, I almost forgot about it. You just have to fold this behind. Uh, so I don't know how much, you know, just fold as much as you like. Okay, so something like this, make sure to use the same reference, so make sure that this part is equal to this part, and so on, to get a nice result. Uh, okay, bit this much. 
And the last one is here, so I can use this as a reference and then use this other part as a reference. And so when I turn around, I will get this. And what also you can also fold this behind, that's what I did. Um, maybe you can see there is a little crease from our 22.5 line. So you can use that as a reference as well. So I'll just fold this behind everywhere as well. I'll approximately fold it same every single side so that it looks symmetrical at the end. Okay, so looks like that. That's our oops, here's a mistake. This has to go behind or actually in this case it was inside. So let's see how that looks like. I don't know, it looks good to me. As you can see there is a C in the middle and you can clearly see that. Well, this can almost fit here. I guess if I were to use 17.5 um, pa uh, paper it will fit exactly here. <laughs> uh, but that's just an assumption. Well, actually this, I can fit this inside for sure. No, I can't. Paper needs to be a little bit bigger. Now, if you take a look at the pictures from uh, Origami USA convention, um, USA convention, uh, you you might see that his Mauricio's model is a bit more rounded. Like his C is r more rounded, and uh, what I mean by that is that he did something like this. He created this extra lines, and then he did it everywhere so that it looks uh, more rounded. So if you're interested in this send me an email and I will gladly make a photo diagram to show you how it's done. But here is just a quick thing. So all I did um, was create this little fold over here and that gave me uh, well this little flat color changing flat. So this is how he did it and then you do it everywhere and then you can also and uh, well, that's pretty much it. You you get um, you get the basic idea here. You can also per perhaps adjust this part. So if I were to unfold this, maybe if you fold this at some weirder angle, let's say I don't know, it's not 22.5, but it's 26 degrees or 25 degrees, something like that. So now when you fold behind, uh, it automatically uh, turned back into uh, 25 degrees but okay so this is a bit more shifted so maybe you you could get a bit more rounded shape uh, so you should just play around with it um, but I'm pretty satisfied with this because it's pure um, it's octagon inside an octagon inside an octagon and so on so this this took me like 40, 40, almost 50 minutes to teach you. Now, uh, this part is wrong. This, yep, like that. Okay, so this took me like 40, like 50 minutes to teach you. Now, you might think that this is not really worth it, but believe me, it's really worth it. If you're, if you want to get better at designing, if you're more interested in folding crisp patterns and things like that. I think this video will help you because it's very hard to get this kind of color changes and uh, Mauricio is really master at uh, this area so I really recommend that uh, you take a look at his crisp patterns and his molds because you'll for sure get better at folding crisp patterns designing and uh, you know be better at origami theory in general because he also designs with uh, 30 degree method uh, or hex splitting uh, so, because he designed the uh, Shirpinski gaskets and all that, um, so it's uh, awesome. Like his molds are very, very nice, very fun to fold. Um, so that's all I have for this video. Uh, it was kind of long, and the model look, it looks pretty simple at the end. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, like my Facebook page. Uh, take a look at Mauricio K's models, you can just google Mauricio K origami or something um, to see 
uh, how awesome he is. I said this too many times, but it's true. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for more videos, and uh, that's it. See ya.